Hello grade 12 students. In this video, we're going to talk about genetics. We'll move to chapter 3, the genetic relation and polymorphism, document 2, mutations, and the multiple allele, pages 60 and 61 on your book. So, what is a mutation? We said that mutation is the change in the nucleotide sequence of the DNA. This mutation refers to a permanent change in the DNA sequence. We have two types of mutations. Mutations in the germ cells. These mutations they are going to be transmitted to the next generation and they may give rise to inherited diseases. Whereas other type of mutations, they occur in the somatic cells and they are not transmitted to the next generation. So they are important in the cogen of cancers and some congenital malfunctions. The agents that can cause mutations, they are referred to as the mutagens. We talk about them, the X-ray, the gamma ray, UV ray, and others. Mutations, they are divided into either frame shift mutation, they are divided into either deletion, meaning that one of the nucleotide is deleted, or insertion, meaning that one of the nucleotide is added or inserted. So these are referred to as frame shift mutation. Whereas point mutation is divided into silent, or the meaning of silent, this will lead to the no change in the sequence of the amino acid. So no change, no detectable change will appear. This sense mutation, this sense point mutation, this leads to the change in the amino acid sequence and the nonsense mutation, this will lead to the appearance of something known by the stop codon. Point mutation, it occurs when only one base in the DNA is altered or changed. The effect can be silent mutation, as we said, missense mutation, or nonsense mutation. Silent mutation, what the meaning of silent? Silent, there is no detectable effect. As we said before, silent, your phone is silent, so there is no detectable effect if it brings or not. So there is no change in the sequence of the amino acid. For example, codon can be changed. The meaning of codon is maybe quick revision, Codon, they are three nucleotide. Every three nucleotide, they are referred to as codon. So codon changed from CGA to CGG. So we change, we substituted this one, A, this nucleotide, into G. So this will not affect the proteins. So both sequence, both codons, they give amino acid or G. Missense mutation. Missense, where a different amino acid will be incorporated in the site of this mutation. For example, the change from the normal red blood cells to the cystical cell cells it occurs when we have a change in one of the amino acids. We're changed from platonic acid into valine as shown here, where A is substituted or A here is substituted. Nonsense mutation. Nonsense, it leads to the conversion of an amino acid into something known by a stop codon, meaning that the amino acid is going to stop, amino acid sequence is going to stop, and the protein is going to be smaller in size. So one type of thalassemia in which codon 17 that can code for the beta chain is changed from UGG to UGA. And this will result to the conversion for a codon tryptophan into a stop codon, which is called also a non-sense codon. Frame shift mutations. Frame shifts, they are insertion or deletion. So this occurs when we have one or more base pairs, they are either inserted or deleted. So these will cause, if they are inserted, this will cause insertion mutation, or if these they are deleted, they are called deletion mutations. Let's take this down. What do you, why it's called a frame shift? Frame shift, let's see in this sequence, we have ATG, GAA, GCA, and CGT. Here, one of the nucleotide, the second codon, the first nucleotide of the second codon. This is the first codon, the second, third, and this is the fourth. The second codon, the first nucleotide. So the first nucleotide of the second codon was deleted. So the first one before the mutation is not going to be changed to remain the same. So ATG, and then here, G is deleted. So we have A, A, and G. 
So A, A, G, A, A, and G. So it's going to be three shifted to the left. So we have A, A, and G. Then we have C, A, C, and then we have G, T. So here we have frame shifting mutation by deletion. So here the effect of the frame shifting mutation is going to be higher. It has a higher effect than the uh, substitution. And this is the example about this sentence. Let's have this sentence. The cat sold the duck. If you substitute one of the letter, for example, the cat, C is substituted by B. So it becomes the bat sold the duck. So a change of the one letter by substitution or binding mutation will not change the whole meaning. Or if you change, for example, the D with the H. So it became the cat sold the hug. Or if you change the W with T. So the cat sent the dog. It still have a meaning, not complete 100%. But if we have the frame fusion mutation, either by deletion or by insertion. So by deletion, we lose one latch. So one of these nucleotides is going to be lost. So here, we remove the A. So it becomes the it becomes frame shift. So A is going to be deleted. C is going to be deleted. So A, T, and S. So it becomes the ads, A, W, T, H, E, D, R. So loss of C. So here, there is no meaning at all. Or by insertion. So insertion means that addition of one letter, one nucleotide or gaining one nucleotide. So we add between C and A, we added the letter M. Becomes the C M A T S A the W T H E D O G, so it has no meaning. So these are the effects of the frame shifting mutations. They have higher effect than those of substitution or the point mutation. Frame shifting mutation, as we said, takes place in deletion or insertion. Deletion, we deleted one of the negative type, or insertion, we inserted or added one. This will lead to the change and the amino acid sequence after the mutation. As I said before, a codon or a triplet is composed of three nucleotides. Each codon will code for one amino acid. We have three main stop codon, UAG, UGA, and UAA. Substitution, as I said, either divided into missense, nonsense, or silent. Missense, it causes a change in the sequence of the amino acid. Nonsense, where stop codon is formed, and all the amino acids that are coded by coded. After this, they are going to be lost. So the protein mainly is going to be shorter inside if we have to stop coding. Or silence, we have a change in the sequence of the nucleotide, will not cause a change in the sequence of the amino acid. So this is called silent, in that there is no effect. Here is table is showing the comparison between DNA and RNA. DNA is double stranded while RNA is single-stranded. The DNA nucleotides, they are A, T, C, and G, while the nucleotides in RNA, they are the same except for T, which is substituted by U. So thymine is substituted by uracil. So the nucleotides, they are A, U, C, and G. The DNA, the sugar is deoxyribose, while the RNA, the sugar is ribose. DNA has long lifespan, while the RNA is short lifespan. DNA, it's stable chemically while the RNA is unstable. DNA is found in the nucleus where RNA can be found in the nucleus and the cytoplasm. Let's move now to talk about the MHC. What is the MHC? MHC is the major histocompatibility complex. These are molecules are found on the surface of all, pay attention here, all nucleated cells. So they are found on the surface of all nucleated cells. They give you your identity. And actually, there are two classes, MHC class one, then C class two. So class one, they are divided into subclasses A, B, and C, while MHC class two, they are divided into DP, DQ, and DR. MHC, they are known to be coded by six genes. They are found on chromosome number six. MHC molecules, they differ from one person to another, while the cells of the same individual, they have identical MHC. You have to know that MHC molecules, they are co-dominant. So you have co-dominance between MHC molecules and the paternal and the maternal MHC, they are expressed. 
maternal from the mother and paternal from the father. Both of them, they are expressed. Let's move to this application. Consider the sequence of the DNA molecule shown here. We have GCA, TGC, ATC, TGC, CAD, and TGC. This is the num template. From now on, you have to keep it in your mind that the non transcribed, the non template, it's called the coding. Pay attention. The non transcribed is called the non template and it's the coding. While the transcribed is called the template, it's the non coding. So if we have the non template or the non transcribed, which is the coding, I want to write the complementary. The complementary for this is going to be the complementary is going to be the template. So let's start here about the template. Let's write the template here. So I want to write the complementary of G it's C. The complementary of C it's G. The complementary of A it's T. Let's move to the second colon. The complementary of T it's A. The complementary of G C, the complementary of C is G. Let's continue. Complementary of A, it's T. The complementary of T, it's A. The complementary of C, it's G. And let's move. The complementary of T, it's A. And the complementary of G, it's C. And the complementary of C is going to be G. Let's move now. C, complementary is G. A, the complementary is T. And the T, the complementary is A. Be careful, you have to write them under each other in order not to have mistakes or you have, for example, misunderstanding for the sequence. T, the complementary is A. C, the complementary G is complementary C. And C, the complementary is G. The non template, as I said, is called the non transcript. And also, it's called the coding. While the sequence is the template, the complementary one is called the template. Or it's called the transcribed. or we can call it the none. Hariri, Ali, what do you think about this? If I want to find out the sequence of the mRNA molecule shown here, what I have to do? How many ways we can find out the sequence of the mRNA? Yes, Ali. Can I mute yourself, Ali? Or maybe Ali has a problem. Let's move to Muhammad. What do you think, Muhammad? How can we solve this sequence? How can we find out the sequence of the mRNA? Uh, the mRNA is similar to the non-transcribed, but T is replaced by U. Excellent. So first way, we can use the non-transcribed, the non-template, which is the coding, where the T is going to be replaced by U. This is the first way. Okay. Second way is? Complementary to the transcribed, but T is replaced by U. Excellent. Complementary to the transcribed, and instead of T is replaced by U. So the, most easy, the easiest one is to use the non-transcribed, the non-template, the coding. So you're going to use this sequence. But instead of T is going to be replaced by U. So the sequence, this is the coding. So the same sequence. So it's going to be GCA. And this one is going to be replaced by U. So it's going to be U, G, C. Then we have A. Instead of T is going to be U, C. Then we have U, G, C. And then we have C, A. U, and finally we will have the GC. This is the mRNA sequence, this one. Okay? So now let's move to the question number two or part 
two. Part two says, uh, why do, how may you relate the mRNA molecule to the template or to the non-template? So let's move to the solution of the first part. You have to know, you have to keep it in mind that the non-template is called the non-transcribed, it's the coding, and the template is called the transcribed, it's the non-coding. So in order to write the template, you have to make the complementary strand. So this is the complementary, and here first part, we find out the sequence of the mRNA. So mRNA, the same sequence of the non-template where the T is replaced by U. So you have to keep it in mind from now on, mRNA is complementary to the template, or mRNA is identical to the non-template where the T is replaced by U. Let's move now to document for detection of genetic polymorphism. Restriction enzyme, what do we got for restriction enzyme? We have a scissor tool. These restriction enzymes, they are DNA cutting enzymes. They cut the DNA. Each enzyme has a specific restriction site. It's called it like a target. So they recognize one or more target sequences and they cut the DNA at these sequences. For example, this is the ECOR1 restriction enzyme. So this restriction enzyme has specific restriction site as shown in this sequence. So they cut in this sequence. So many restriction enzymes, they make staggered cuts, they produce ends with single stranded DNA overhangs. This equation you have to keep in mind. First of all, you have to know that restriction enzyme, they cut double stranded DNA at specific sites, they code restriction sites, okay, or restriction sequences. So these are the function, these are the function of the restriction enzymes. Also, we have ligase enzyme. Is the one that joins two DNA molecules together. And we talked about this last year. So number of fragments. If I want to find out the number of fragments, I'm going to cut. For example, if I have a paper, I want to cut it one time. How many pieces are we got? Are we get to? So number of fragments, it's the number of restriction sites plus one. So if I want to cut a paper, this is a paper, I want to cut it. I cut it in only one restriction site. So number of fragments, it could be number of restriction sites, it's one, plus one. So I get two fragments, I get two pieces, two papers. So this equation, you have to know it in order to solve the exercises. Gel electrophoresis, where xenogram is used to determine whether an allele is normal or it's abnormal. And it's used to determine the genotype of the individual. It also allows to determine the length of the DNA molecule in the lab. So note that the thick band in the xenogram, it represents two copies of this allele, meaning that, that this individual is homozygous. Moving to document five about the genetic identity of individuals. Fish technique. Fish technique is called fluorescent in situ hybridization. This technique is used to locate a gene on the chromosome. So we have a gene on a chromosome, I wanted to locate it. So first step, we have to do the sequencing of the gene. We have to determine the sequence of the gene. This is the sequence of the gene, it's shown here. Then we have to prepare a probe. Probe is sequence of DNA 10 to 12 nucleotides. It's single stranded, it's radioactive, and it's complementary. For example, this is the probe for complementary to this sequence that's underlined here. So A, the complementary is T. C, the complementary is G. C, the complementary is G. G, the complementary is C. T, the complementary is A. C, the complementary is G. A, it's T. G, it's C. G, it's T, and D, it's A. Here, these stars mean that this is radioactive one. Number three, we have to unwind the two DNA strands by the denaturation of the DNA. So you have to unwind the two DNA strands of the DNA partially, and then we add this probe, this radioactive probe, this probe that's complementary and single stranded to the tube containing the chromosomes. We have the exomine and the fragments of the chromosomes. The radioactivity is deleted, it's going to be the location of the gene. This is called fluorescent in situ hybridization technique. This probe, it can be either monolocus or multilocus. What the meaning of mono? It's one. Multi, more than one. So mono locus, locus, it's a position. 
and the plural flow this is low psi. So locus it binds to specific sequence on one side, which is treated only one time. And the genome used in the electrophoresis, or it's called the gel electrophoresis. Whereas multi locus, it will bind to more than one site. This sequence, maybe it's repeated more than once in the genome, the DNA. Maybe it's used in the DNA fingerprint. It's binding to many repetitive sequences. This is about the probe, monolocus, and multi locus. Okay? Thank you.